welcome back to my vlog, or to it, if this is your first visit. Uh, I'm going to read here, Ask That Man, by Robert Benchley. It was one that followed one that I read uh, yesterday about romance of digestion, and I think this is humorous. Of course it is, it's Robert Benchley. This is written for those men who have wives who are constantly insisting on their asking questions of officials. For years, I was troubled with the following complaint. Just as soon as we started out on a trip of any kind, even if it were only to the corner of the street, Doris began forcing me to ask questions of people. If we weren't quite sure of the way, why don't you ask that man? He could tell you. If there was any doubt as to the best place to go to get chocolate ice cream, she would say, why don't you ask that boy in uniform? He would be likely to know. I can't quite define my aversion to asking questions of strangers. From snatches of family battles which I have heard drifting up from railway stations and street corners, I gather that there are a great many men who share my dislike for it, as well as an equal number of women who, like Doris, believe it to be the solution of most of this world's problems. The man's dread is probably that of making himself appear a pest or ridiculously uninformed. The woman's insistence is based probably on experience, which has taught her that anyone, no matter who, knows more about things in general than her husband. Furthermore, I never know exactly how to begin, how to begin a request for information. If I preface it with, I beg your pardon, the stranger is likely not to hear, especially if he happens to be facing in another direction. For my voice isn't very reliable in crises and sometimes makes no intelligible sound at all until I've been talking for fully a minute. Often I say, I beg your pardon, and he turns quickly and says, what did you say? Then I have to repeat, I beg your pardon. And he asks quite naturally, what for? Then I am stuck. Here I am begging a perfect stranger's pardon and for no apparent reason under the sun, the wonder is that I'm not knocked down oftener. It was to avoid going through life under this pressure that I evolved the little scheme detailed herewith. It cost me several thousand dollars, but Doris is through with asking questions of outsiders. We had started on a little trip to Boston. I could have found out where the Boston train was in a few minutes had I been left to myself, but Doris never relies on the signs. Someone must be asked to just to make sure. Confronted once by a buckboard, literally swathed in banners which screamed in red letters, this bus goes to the state fairgrounds. I had to go up to the driver who had on his cap a flag reading to the state fairgrounds and ask him if this bus surely went to the state fairgrounds. He didn't even answer me. So when Doris said, go and ask that man where the Boston train leaves from, I gritted my teeth and decided that the time had come. Simulating conversa conversation with him, I really asked him nothing and returned to Doris saying, come on, he says it goes from track 10. Eight months later, we returned home. The train that left on track 10 was the Chicago Limited, which I had taken deliberately. In Chicago, I again falsified what that man told me, and instead of getting on the train back to New York, we went to Little Rock, Little Rock Arkansas. Every time I had to ask where the best hotel was, I made up information which brought us out into the suburbs cold and hungry. Many nights we spent wandering through the fields looking for some place that never existed, or else in the worst hotel in town, acting on what I said was the advice of that kind looking man in uniform. From Arkansas, we went into Mexico, and once, guided by what I told her had been the directions given me by the man at the newsstand in Veracruz, we made a sally into the swamps of Central America in whatever that first republic is on the way south. After that, Doris began to lose faith in what strange men could tell us. One day, at a little station in Mavicos, I said, wait a minute, till I ask that man what is the best way to get back into America. And she said, sobbing, don't ask anybody, just do what you think is best. Then I knew that the fight was over. In 10 days, I had her limp form back in New York, and from that day to this, she hasn't once suggested that I ask questions of a stranger. The funny part of it is, I constantly find myself asking them. 
I guess the humiliation came in being told to ask. Hope you like that, Benchley. I think there will be another one tomorrow. Make it a great day, and bye for now.